Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Glad to have all of you here. Um, there's just a few announcements I want to highlight. Um, the first one is that I'm guessing you would like newsletter information this week. <laughs> I'm on the ball today. I ordered the calendars earlier for church. I'm good. All right. So, um, yes, yeah, so if you have items for the newsletter this week, please make sure you get them to either Joyce or Pat uh, to put those together. Um, and then the other announcement that I want to make is one that I keep forgetting to put in the bulletin, um, but it has been in the newsletter. On November 4th, that's two Sundays from today, it is All Saints Sunday. It's the Sunday where we remember all of those who have died in the faith before us. Um, and this year we're going to do a little something extra with it, and that's after church. While the kids are working on their program, uh, the adults are invited to gather in the parish hall, and we are going to have a time of sharing of memories and stories. So if you want to bring pictures, um, various things of loved ones that, you've, um, that you would like to remember during that time, you can bring those. And then when the kids are finished, we're all going to join together in a potluck. And our um, youth group jazz combo is going to play some kind of Dixieland jazz um, hymns for us as well. So please mark down November 4th, that's two Sundays from today, um, to remain after church. And for the potluck, if you'd like to bring either um, one of your loved one's favorite recipes or a recipe that they've handed down to you, um, please uh, bring that and share it with the community. Uh, I have a couple of prayer list announcements, but before that, are there any other announcements this morning? Rick. Yes, um, we have a All right. Debbie. As you can see, we're going to be having the blessing of the kids and stuff today. Just for your information, this is the whole congregation work. This is not just two or three people to get this together. It takes a whole congregation to do this. For our, um, the kids that we have assembled, So that's this Saturday at 10 a.m. to load items. And you saw the kits were out there today. We have some up here, and we will be blessing those today after the prayer of the day. Um, are there other? Irv. I just want to thank everybody for hearts, letters, prayers, and their thoughts. Uh, my recent heart spell and I have certainly been back. Yay. And we're so glad to have you back with us. All right, are any of the kids making the announcement or so? Oh, oh Nathan, all right. I'll say. Uh, I see you may saw, may have seen. Uh, me, Reagan, Lily, and Luke are all selling butter braids for our man's trip to New Orleans this spring. Yeah. Really exciting. We've been selling for a few years now, but it's kind of coming up this spring. So we'll be selling again after church. If any of you guys would like to help us raise money for our trip, that'd be really awesome. And Mr. Hess told uh, the parents to remind everybody they will be here in time for Thanksgiving. So order them now because then you can have them for Thanksgiving meals. So, <laughs> um, And we appreciate all that, the support for our, our kids. Um, are there any other announcements? Cody. I believe there is some 
young man's birthday today. Three I was going to say, we, we're, we're going to have a lot of birthdays to birthdays. sing for in a few minutes. I think Mark and Bruce yeah. and Rick all celebrated birthdays. I was going to say, uh, well, I know, yeah. So Bruce, Mark, Rick, Corbin, Sherry. Do we have any other birthdays this week? This is like the week, of, or this coming week. This is the week of, like, half the congregation. Eric, yeah. You're, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it is the, the birthday week. The what? Your granddaughter. I'm telling you, there's something about this week in October. In this? In this? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Um, so, all right, so I will do the prayer announcements, and then we are going to sing happy birthday to all of our October birthdays. And, um, uh, yeah, I was going to say, I'll say, there you go. We'll, say, we'll just say dear friends, because there are a lot of names to fit in, in a short space. Um, but the two uh, prayer list announcements that I wanted to add, um, one of them is for Raquel Weber Lawrence. Um, she is now home, but she had to have her gallbladder out, and... My understanding it was quite a process for them to determine what was going on and then take it out. And I know Grandma and Grandpa got to spend some time with Ray Lynn, and, and, um, but she's, Raquel's feeling much better in his home now. But we'll keep her in our prayers for healing and, and, um, in this time. And then um, uh, the other name that got added to our prayer list is Brent. And somebody's going to have to say this. Eulich, right? Yes, Brent Eulich. Um, Brent is Stephanie Wallace's husband. Um, they're members up at the Crescent City Church, and uh, Brent was diagnosed with a form of cancer in his jaw, and this coming week he'll be going through some reconstructive surgery, so we ask that you keep him and his family in your prayers. If you know them at all, they have four small girls at home, and, um, and it's been quite a shock to have this um, come about, but they think they've caught it early. Prognosis looks good, but he has to have the surgery and, and um, possibly go through some treatment, so he'll be on our prayer list. Um, and along with that, that whole family, we also, we, uh, Cindy called and had her name take off the prayer list this week because she is back at home. Um, so we're thankful for her healing, and then we um, pray for Brent. Are there any other prayer list items for this morning? All right, then let us sing happy birthday to all of our October friendly birthdays. Um, Nathan, you want to kick that off for me? Because I always pick too high of a key. I, or Rick, you want me? <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to your October friends. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. <laughs> and many more. All right, let us uh, turn to our worship service with our brief order for confession and forgiveness, which can be found on the screen or page 10. <laughs> page 10. Ah. We worship as we are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name.
In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Lord be with you. Let us join together in our prayer of the day. Sovereign God, you turned your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, we're going to take a moment to bless our Lutheran World Relief quilts and kits as they travel this coming week. O Lord, our God, maker of all things, you have blessed us with so many gifts, a good eye for color, an open heart to love our neighbor in other countries, and an abundance of your blessings in our lives. Now we offer the fruits of our labors, these quilts and kits to you. We dedicate them to your service, trusting that your love will go wherever each item is sent, making it more than just a piece of material, a collection of items, making each piece an expression of our love. Lord, we know that everything comes from your loving hand. May these quilts and kits that come from our hands be your heart to the world in need. Let us join in prayer. God, all that we have made in these boxes, we have made for you and for your people. We ask that you take them and use them for a world in need, and that you keep us mindful of all those who struggle daily to have warmth and shelter, care and clothing, food and necessities we take for granted. Watch over them and guide us to continue giving our blessings as we are able. In your name we pray. Amen. The first reading today comes from Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 12. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken from the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth, Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the, transgre with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Here ends the first reading.
The psalm for today is Psalm 91, and we'll read responsibly by whole verse. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, and the Most High your habitation, for God will give the angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. You will tread upon the lion cub and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. I will deliver those who cling to me. I will uphold them because I fail my name. They will call me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. With long life will I satisfy them and show them my salvation. The second reading today comes from Hebrews chapter 5 verses 1 through 10. Every high priest chosen from among mortals to, is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as the, for those to, of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of, the, of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Here in the second reading. I invite the young people forward. Mm, nope. But good guess. I still wanted to show you how many games. It's a game. It is. I'll tell you about it in a minute. <laughs> for that one, I figured you might come up for this one. This is one of Isaiah's favorite games. So, and I know by bringing it out today, I'm going to have to play it later today. But. This game is called the Worst Case Scenario Survival Game, Junior. How kids solve sticky predicaments, right? In other words, what to do when you get in trouble. The funny thing about this game is what, Matt? What, what, what annoys us about this game? Not realistic, not really helpful. In the game, there are cards, and they have either questions or they have a situation and they, they want to know what you would use in a situation. And the things that you can use are things like an ice cream sandwich, because don't you carry one of those on you at all times? No. no? A knife? Are you allowed to carry knives around? No. 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 Towel? Yeah. Maybe. Water bottle. But they're kind of goofy. So I thought it'd be kind of fun. I pulled out a couple of um, the questions or situations and the answers they have, and I thought it might be fun to hear what they do. So I'm going to give you each one. If you can't read it, that's okay. I'll help you through it. Um, but but just, just hang on to these for a minute, okay? And, and we're going to go, hang on that. All right, and we're going to go one through one. I'm going to help you guys read them if you need it, and you're going to tell me what you think. And we're going to want them to think too. All right, so Alex, go ahead. Features. All right, what to do if your big brother's tie gets caught in an electric fan? Jason Nolan, listen up. Okay. Okay, what's the answer? First, stop laughing at him. Now turn off the fan or pull out the plug. To get his tie off, cut it off. Okay. All right, so they're recommending a knife to help in this situation. Right? But first, I'm going to plug the fan right. Okay. So, yeah. And, and really, if you're that close to electric fan to tie, you have, you have some logic. Okay, now yeah, here, uh, yours has a question here, and I want to hear the question. Okay? This is, alright. A mouse crawling up the 
regular
We thank you that you are always willing to listen to us. When we're silly, when we're outrageous, when we're angry, when we're sad, always you're willing to listen to us. We thank you that you have a heart for us, that you love us, and that you want us to know more about you, that you always want to talk with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. I can't hurt. Mark the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you were asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> well, while I think we've all established pretty good and trusting relationships together, I would guess that none of us would simply do for us whatever we ask, right? Let's test this theory a little. Um, Mark, I'd like to be in charge of combining whatever fields you have left, even though I don't hold a proper license and I've never driven a combine before. What do you say? <laughs> wow, you're brave. <laughs> uh, Cody, Sarah, Renee, Kelly. I would like you to put me in charge of one of your shifts at the bank. I'm trustworthy. Terrible at math, but trustworthy. What do you say? Matt, I like Hostess. Is that enough to let you send me to your next big trade show? <laughs> right? I mean, you get where I'm going with this, right? Who among us is really willing to trust me with your job, your vehicle, your bank account, your family, right? Well, huh, maybe if it was family or a really close friend or you were very daring, you might be willing to consider it. But even then, you wouldn't let just anyone do it. 
It's not that we might not be able to work something out or that we wouldn't help each other when it comes right down to it. But agreeing to a request with no boundaries and no information is dangerous for the person answering and is ridiculous for the person asking. Jesus, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. What are James and John thinking? They must be out of their minds to make such a bold request. Especially when we're told in the previous verses that the 12 disciples are traveling all together in a little group behind Jesus. Can you imagine how the other 10 felt at this request? Hey, we'd like to sit, you know, one at your left, one at your right. It's either really brave or really stupid on the brother's part. But perhaps it was also because they were traveling in just their small group of friends. And they were on their way to Jerusalem that leads to the question. Because the part of the gospel we don't get to read, the part that is between last week's gospel of with God all things are possible, and this week's gospel of left and right, comes a part that sounds a little like this. They, the disciples, were on the road, going to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. He took the twelve aside and began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles, and they will mock him, and spit upon him, and flog him, and kill him. And after three days, he will rise again. That's what James and John have just heard. And fear can make people say really brave and really stupid things. I think James and John had already come to the conclusion that they were going all the way to Jerusalem with Jesus. They were going to follow him to whatever that meant. And while they might not have understood everything that was about to happen, sure, we can drink your cup and baptize, be baptized by your baptism. What they did know was that it was going to be hard and it sounded frightening. They will mock him and spit upon him and flog him and kill him. But they were going. And if they were going, they might as well, as the saying goes, go big. We're going to do this, Jesus. We want to do it at your left and at your right. What really brave or really stupid things have you asked God for? I'm guessing most of them have stemmed from one of two places. Selfishness, or most likely, fear. Sound like James and John? Do they really want glory for themselves? It's a possibility. Or do they really just want the reassurance that Jesus isn't going to abandon them in all that is to come? Let us sit one at your left and one at your right where we can touch you, hold on to you. We've been known to want the same. God be with us right here, right now. Think about how many books you've read, stories you've heard, maybe even times you have experienced bargaining with God. God, if you just do this, I will do this. Even our beloved Martin Luther, the one who will celebrate next week, the starter of the religious reformation, would have been a lawyer if not for a bargain he made with God in the middle of a thunderstorm when he was scared. We turn to God all the time with the really brave and really stupid requests of our lives and everything in between. We may not ask to sit on the right or the left because hopefully we learn from James and John, 
but we ask for some equally selfish and fearful demands. Heaven knows how many times I prayed for my brother's flicking finger to fall off. But thankfully, God doesn't always fulfill our requests. But he does listen. I love Jesus' response to James and John. What is it, you ask of me? He doesn't rebuke them. He doesn't roll his eyes, maybe a little. But he doesn't turn them away. He doesn't reject their question with a, you're crazy. He listens to the request. And he answers. And we can go one of two ways on that answer. I've often heard people preach the angry, slightly vindictive answer. You think you can drink my cup? All right. You think you can handle my baptism? You'll find out. And it becomes a foreshadowing to James's martyrdom and John's exile. But it could also be Jesus' reassurance that he has them covered because he will share a cup with them at his final meal. Can you drink of my cup? And if we think of his actual baptism, it was a moment of claiming the voice of God saying, you are my beloved. And through Jesus' baptism into death and resurrection, he will assure a place in the kingdom for James and John. You will drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism. He tempers them a bit. I can't guarantee sitting next to me. That's not up to me. But you'll be there. And that will be enough. Jesus isn't worried so much about the arrangements in heaven as he is about getting everyone there. Jesus doesn't mind our questions. The brave ones, the silly ones, the selfish ones, the fearful ones, even the really stupid ones. It doesn't mean he'll turn around and answer them all exactly how we'd like or how we'd expect. But he knows most of them come from a place of fear. Fear for ourselves, our loved ones, our world. It's in those questions that he can respond that he can speak with us, that he can remind us that he's not really here to do for us whatever we ask of him, but to do for us everything we need of him. He will reassure us of our belovedness as the children of God. He will share with us another cup of his life-giving presence. He will baptize us anew with forgiveness and grace helping to change our fear and our selfishness into faith and servanthood. Jesus stood on that road with his amazed and his afraid disciples, and he set his face to Jerusalem, knowing it would bring his death, but knowing also it would bring about the death of his 12 friends, the end of the death of his 12 friends, the end of the death of the chief priests and the scribes who would mock him and beat him that would end death for all who came before and for all who came after. And he went. No questions asked. And he answered the question of who would save us and whether God loved us. Jesus stands always ready. Stands with us, ready to speak with us, to hold us, to answer us, or at least listen to our questions our queries, our quandaries, our quarrels, our quagmires, our qualms, our quizzes. Scrabble, anyone? You get it. He's willing to listen to everything we have to say. Jesus is always there for us. Amen.
Let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. Now longing for God's will to be fulfilled among us, we pray persistently for the church, the world, and all people in need. Holy One, open the lines of communication within your church, enabling us to listen to each person's voice and to lift up each person's unique gifts for your sake. Bless our quilts and kits offerings at, to a world in need. Lord, in your mercy, fill creation from mountain peak to the deepest valley with your invigorating spirit. Give strength and provision to animals that prepare for a cold weather. Watch over all those who labor to bring in the end of the harvest. Keep safe the world which you have given us. Lord, in your mercy, grant your spirit of humility to those who hold authority. Direct political leaders to live in service to their citizens and to turn our eyes and hearts towards our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, guard and protect the ones who call to you out of despair, illness, or injury. Deliver them from their struggles into havens where they can find healing and faithful companionship. We ask you to watch over this day, Martin and Eileen, Dixie, Lee, Julia, Marilyn, Don, Melissa, Tim, Pat, Pauline, Steve, Pam, Marcia, Brayden, Marion, Susan, Irma, Doug, Irv, Brent, Raquel, and all those who rest in our hearts and our minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prepare a seat for all the saints in your holy kingdom. Bring us all into a righteous reality where honor is given to the lowly and where we all share in the life that you have given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enfold all things in your compassion, O God, and bring us into your life through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another.
death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night which was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit that by this Holy Communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us.
Now let us rise and receive the blessing of the table. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.